Hello there. It is approximately 8.15 Central Time on Thursday night, July the 21st. And this is Cam Does Cool Stuff. Uh, now, anybody who may be viewing this may be familiar with me as a uh, developer, um, but you may have also seen that I do like a lot of 3D printing and um, like hardware kind of stuff too. So I actually have a little project that I need to get done. I've been putting it off for a little while. And I figured, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of that tonight, and I'm going to stream about it. So um, let me lay out what I'm doing. And I'll start by sharing this screen right here, which is empty right now. And I will show you this picture. So this is my stairway going upstairs in my house. Now, um, please excuse the dog for, I'm sure if my wife was looking at the stream, she would be absolutely mortified, but we have a, a black lab and anybody who's had a, a black lab knows that if you have a black lab, you have black dog hair everywhere, um, all the time. So anyway, this stairwell has this climbing vine thing that I've trained to go around the column and uh, we're, you know, starting to take it up the wall. And I'm, I think I'm going to take it like over the window and like have the the different vines hang down over the window to do like kind of a natural, um, kind of a natural curtain, right? Uh, but here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. So I've been hanging the plant on the wall using these hooks right here. Now this is a design that I downloaded from Thingiverse. I did not design this. Uh, it's just a little hook. It was actually made for hanging. Um, I have a, like, like a, like a, it's like an airsoft gun, but it shoots salt. It's for killing flies. And these hooks were actually designed to hold that on the wall. So in my pantry, I've got my, my, my gun for hunting flies. And the problem with using these hooks to hang the plant, let's look at that again. The problem with using these hooks is uh, if we if we go and look like right here there's there's a hook right there and there's one and I think there's one and there's where one fell off the wall because they keep falling off the wall because I stick them with these 3m things so what I need to do is I want to redesign uh, what I want to do is I want, where the heck did my mouse pointer go? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's because I'm still in Zoom it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think, redesign this. I'm going to take some measurements on it and make my own that will have a hole through which I can put one of these screws into one of these self-drilling drywall anchors. I like these self-drilling drywall anchors. I know some people don't because they, they make a big hole. But um, the way I see it, you're going to have to, you know, patch the drywall when you take the drywall anchor out one way or another. So you might as well use the self-drilling ones and get the bigger hole. But they're easier. And I, I think I feel like they hold better, but I, I don't know. So anyway, we're going to be designing one of these. <clears throat> so where do we start? Well, let's start with Autodesk Fusion 360. So Autodesk Fusion 360 is a CAD program that's, um, I like using Autodesk Fusion 360 because it's free. The price is right. Um, it's free for hobbyists and um, they also have a program that's free for startups, but I'm not a startup. I'm a, hobby, I'm a hobbyist, so I register for the hobbyist license. And this is the full product. They give you the full, like their professional subscription package for free, and you just have to re-up your hobbyist license every year. So um, I use this guy for doing um, pretty much all my designs for 3D printing. Um, so we have, a, we have an untitled doc right here, uh, just a blank, blank slate. And where we're going to start, um, I have to think about it, actually, because I haven't done it for a while. Um, I believe I'm going to create, yep, create a sketch. There we go. So what plane are we sketching on? We'll sketch on this plane right here. 
So looking at this thing again, it's basically just a little L with a lip. And I really just want to duplicate this. I really like the, the, the hook here for holding up the plant. Um, I like the, the width of it. I like the, the little, the little lip and even, even the back is the right height. I really just need to make it kind of probably a little bit wider in the back and, and have, you know, a hole that's big enough for the screw. So let's start off by measuring the old one. I see my, uh, See my dear friend LQ Dev One is in the audience. How are you doing, Luis? <clears throat> so um, this is a digital caliper. The battery's a little low in it, looks like, but I think I, I think it'll still do the job. Um, we're going to start by measuring this, and we're going to recreate some of the measurements. So we'll just start with thickness. I actually, I'm going to I'm going to start with like this. This leg right here, I'm, I'm going to basically draw a rectangle to represent this leg. So let's just let's just measure like the thickness and the length of this rectangle. It's um, it's about five and a half millimeters thick. It might have been designed originally uh, not. It might have been designed originally as five millimeters, and it might just be the thickness of my printer that makes it thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and just call it five millimeters thick, and it. This leg is 55 millimeters long. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start with a rectangle. And I like to actually use the keyboard to type it. Oh, no, stop. No, nope, didn't want to do that. Go back. Here, let's make this bigger. All right, so it's going to be, what did I say, 55 millimeters. Oh, darn it, did I hit enter by mistake? Uh, and then this is, where's my... Um, five millimeters. <clears throat> All right, so there's the, there's the back leg. That was, that, that's, that's easy enough, right? So that's like from a side profile. So we'll do the bottom leg now. Um, how long is, and we'll just assume that, I mean, I guess I can measure, but I'm pretty sure it's also five millimeters thick. It is five millimeters thick. So um, let's measure the length of it with the caliper. That's going to be 70 millimeters. So you can't hear it, but in my headphones is Dre. So I encourage you, if you have Spotify, to listen along. Okay, so what did I say? 70 millimeters? Yeah, 70 millimeters. Five millimeters thick, 70 millimeters long. There we go. And then the last thing we're going to measure off of this old one is the little lip. And they put a lip on it of, it measures right at 23 millimeters, but that seems like a weird number. I'm gonna call it 20, 25 millimeters, just cause I like that better. There's 20, 25 by five. Look at that. I don't even have to type it in. All right. 
so that's the sketch. That's the side profile of the hook thing. That's, that's what it looks like. Now, what we do at this point is we select all those planar faces. And I, I think this is extrude. Yeah, we're going to extrude. And how far are we going to extrude? Well, how thick is the original one? It is 15-ish eh, millimeters thick. Here we go, 15. <clears throat> so we'll extrude 15 millimeters. There we go. So now if we look, it just went from a 2D shape to a 3D shape. Okay, so there's still some more fit and finish things to do. For one, let's look at the front profile of this hook that I'm trying to replicate. It has beveled edges. So we can do that. That's not hard. Going to adjust my ankle here and zoom in. And select that edge and hold shift and select that edge over there. And then we're going to do the fillet tool. And just take it to a nice little half circle. I'm not even going to calculate the radius. I'll just make it to a half circle like that. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So what else do we want to do? You know, you know what else we could do? If I'm not if I'm not sticking these to the wall and I don't have to make the little 3M strip stick to the back, I could fill it the corners on the other side too, just for like a nice look. So why don't I do that? All right, we'll select those two edges. I'll hit F for my fillet tool, and I'll just, again, I'm just going to take it in to make a nice little, whoops, not too far, nice little half circle. And it calculates the radius of seven and a half millimeters. Sounds right. All right, so let's see what this looks like now. Yeah? That seems pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> so now we need a screw hole. So I'm going to measure this screw. I mean, I probably know the specifications of the screw if I look on the box that I pulled it out of, but I didn't. So I might as well just measure it with the calipers anyway. And survey says it is about 3.6 millimeters, maybe 3.7-ish if I get it right on the threads. So I'm just going to call it like a 5 millimeter hole, I think. That, that would be, so if I open my caliper to 5 millimeters, yeah, the screw can't get through that. That'll work. <clears throat> So let's go back to our sketching. Da, 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 da. No, I'm not with the yeah. Sorry. It's like the the late nineties when he recorded with uh, Snoop a lot. And what's funny is I wasn't even into hip hop until I got into Hamilton, right? Because I, I was like the, I was a band kid and I was like into Broadway musicals and jazz. My musical tastes were just like not contemporary at all. And, um, <clears throat> and so like, you know, like um, 
on that other on 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 my other stream that I'm on with Scott and Dave, the the .NET docs, the music that we use for the bumpers going in and out of the show, that's actually my music. That's actually some 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 stuff that I recorded with my electronic wind instrument, and I did like I did like all the backing tracks and band in a box. I can't take credit for any of that, but um, <clears throat> yeah. So that was like my thing. I was a jazz musician, and I'd played in jazz bands. I listened to a lot of jazz, and I also really dug Broadway musicals. And I, I kind of had a dream of going to Broadway and being, you know, trying out and being in an orchestra, you know, in some show somewhere. Um, the other thing that I kind of thought about was like playing in bands on, um, yeah. The other thing I kind of thought about was playing in in bands like um, on cruise ships or something, but uh, I never did that. And and I mean, given the times in terms of contagious disease, cruise ships are not something I would ever want to be on again. Um, so uh, yeah, scratch that idea. But I ended up in technology and eventually at Microsoft. So you know, it all worked out. Um, all of that to say, I did not listen to hip hop like when I was a kid at all. I barely listened to rock. I listened to some oldies because you know my mom would drive me to school, um, like oldies that aren't like from when I was a kid, but like from when my mom was a kid. And uh, yeah, Hamilton really. I, I listened to Hamilton and I, and I really started like reading the analyses and like where the influences come from, like um, like in that one number of my shot where he spells out, you know. Uh, uh, the the what is it the 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 plan is to fan this spark into a flame, but damn it's getting dark. So let me spell out the name. I am the A L E X A N D E R. We are meant to be a colony. The okay. So anyway, you know where that goes. Um, like I didn't know that he lifted that from Biggie. Right. That's um, oh something something. So I'm gonna spell it for you one more time. It's the N O T O R I O U S. You just lay down slow. Right. I had no idea. And and now I'm I'm like listening to Biggie and Dre and all these other artists that I j were just like I had never would have never discovered them otherwise. That's a big digression. <clears throat> all right, so where was I? Uh, yeah, we're gonna drill a hole. So we're gonna sketch on that surface right there. And I think it wants me to put a point. And see, it's it's actually so. There's the point that's the center of the uh, of the of the circle there. Of those of, the, of that arc. So what we can do is I can just draw a circle. Whoops. Uh, you know what? I should do a point first. Will you let me put a point on your center? No. No. Don't make me zoom in and measure. Uh, right, escape. So, uh, Luis says, conversely, if you'll you'll listen to a lot of Isley Brothers and similar music sampled in hip hop, yeah, no, yeah, I, I I figured that out too, and a lot of like, you know, you'll hear a lot of the the old school jazz and and uh, and even Broadway stuff that I dug when I was a kid. You'll hear it sampled. Uh, it's, it's I I had no idea the musical influences in hip hop. I I really had no idea. Um, I I guess I grew up under a rock. I grew up in rural Missouri, is is what happened. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been really digging this this musical discovery phase that I'm in. <clears throat> so how can I just put a point on that point? Will it let me do that? No, it won't. But I oh wait, there it is, right there. Draw a point. There we go. There's my point. That point, it just snapped. It's the point that's the center of this, this half circle out here. Um, and what I want to do right there, um, actually, you know, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do a sketch at all. Uh, let's go back. Go back a step. There we go. Um, zoom back out a little bit and what you can do what i can do is i can use the whole tool if i hit h well then it doesn't snap me to the center so i guess maybe i do need to do a sketch after all 
and use that point. So now we'll do the whole tool right there. Aha, there we go. So what did we call it? We said a five millimeter hole. Five millimeter. All right. So there's a screw hole. And you know, I think to make it just look nice, we'll um, countersink it just a little bit. Oh, you know, I should turn that off. There we go. So yeah, we'll make it look nice by countersinking it just a tiny bit. So hole again. I really would like you to just snap to the center there, wherever that is. You know where it is. I know you know where it is. Select. No, it, for some reason it won't. Okay, that's fine. We will, again, just create a sketch. And put a point right there. That's all we need to do. Finish. So now we have a point that we can snap to for the whole tool. Oh, I'm changing my original hole there, aren't I? I wonder how, how you would go about counterboring that. I know I've done this before. Hmm. I hate when it's so long that you uh, don't lose a tool. You don't use a tool, and then you forget how to do it. I really feel like there's something. Oh, I know what I can do. So, to using the whole whole tool, I can actually. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Don't do that. Go back to the sketch here. Where'd my uh, where'd my object go? Mm. Hmm. Somewhere there's got to be an option here to reset my view. Oh yeah, it's the. There it is. <clears throat> uh, so we were going to create a sketch on that planar surface right there. And we are just going to sketch out a... Uh, I don't know how wide we need to make it. Let's measure the head of the screw. You know, the head of the screw is eight millimeters, so I'll just call it eight and actually I'll call it nine. There we go. And now we'll finish that sketch and we will select that planar surface right there. And this is cool. We will extrude. as a cut and we go <clears throat> how thick is the head of the screw uh, maybe three millimeters maybe but it's only five millimeters thick so I'm only gonna sink it two millimeters or yeah that should be fine how am I gonna print this thing I'm going to have to use support somewhere. 
I mean, what, what angle am I going to, here, let me explain. Oh, and by the way, there's our countersunk hole. So when I print it, I am going to have to print, I'm going to have to decide which lay, which part is, is, um, on the print bed. And I could print it on its side like this, but then it's going to generate some supports right here and probably in this circle right here. It's probably going to generate some supports there too to print, to hold up the plastic, because otherwise gravity will affect the plastic as it, as it comes out of the extruder, possibly. Um, this is actually still pretty small, and depending on the layer size... Uh, so, could print it like this. The printer should probably be able to handle printing out the hole there without supports. But even if I let it make the supports, that would probably be okay. We, we purposefully measured that and cut it just a little bit big. So this might be it. We might be done at this point. Uh, well, with the 3D object. You know, we still need to print it. Um, so let's get it into Cura. So let's name this thing first. Oh, there we go. Uh, fine hook. I see we've had some viewers drop in and drop out. So just to review what we're doing real quick. Um, actually, before I do that, let me open that picture again. Where did I put that? It's in my downloads folder. Here we go. So for people that are just joining, this is the stairway in my house, complete with dog hair. And we have this vine. And I... Um, I have been hanging that vine on the wall using this 3D hook, uh, this 3D printed hook design that I downloaded from Thingiverse. I didn't design this. I... Um, I downloaded it. And the problem with it is, if we go back to the picture, the problem with it is, is I have to stick these to the wall with adhesive because they don't have any holes through them. So, you know, I have, I have one here. Whoops, wrong, wrong zoom it. I have one here and you can see one here. And there's one like back here, I think. There was one here, but it fell off. And I think there was one here, but it fell off. And when this one here fell off, it took a piece of the paint with it. Um, and, and ultimately what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the plant go up and above this window right here and kind of hang down and, and provide kind of a natural curtain. So what I need to do and what I've been working on for the past 30 minutes or so is I'm going to take the same design that I had, that I had been using, and I'm recreating it. And what I've done in, in Fusion 360, as you can see, I have, here, I'll even, how do we do the, the aspect? God, this is hard. There we go. There. You can see, I, I, I stole the design. Like, I measured it and stole the design piece by piece, and then I just put a hole in it so I can hang it with a drywall screw. <clears throat> not Well, not a drywall screw, but a drywall anchor. So that's it. That's, that's the design. I think it's done. So we can save it. Uh, I'm going to put this in my house folder. Vine hook. We 
would you like to see my other designs before I slice this thing for 3D printing? Of course you would. Some of the other things that I've done. Um, here we go. So the doorknobs in our house have like a little vertical slit for locking and unlocking, you know, the interior doorknobs, like they have like a safety thing. So if your kid gets locked out of their room or, you know, you get locked out of the bathroom or whatever, you can still unlock it, but that's, you know, for privacy more than anything, like, you know, bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, so this is a key that I made. It has a little slot right there to go, you know, to, to turn the, to turn the slot. Um, my wife has a, had a birdhouse that fell apart and the chimney fell off of it, a little wooden chimney. So I 3D printed a replacement. Um, this thing is just a half of a box, but it's measured to fit the internet appliance in my house that um, does the internet filtering. Um, my oldest son, who he's he's scary smart and he's uh uh always been a little rambunctious a little precocious he figured out early on in having a filtering appliance that he could just unplug the filtering appliance now it, it it's it has uh it has a backup battery um but it also has a power button so he would just like hold the power button and turn it off he figured out how it works so um, this was a box I had designed, just like a little half a box I designed so I could set the filtering appliance somewhere on my network rack and conceal it. The thought was that this box would be printed in black plastic and he would just never notice. But then I got a better idea. Okay, I don't know if they can hear me. So I'm going to speak really low into my mic. So this, and, uh, and hope he doesn't watch the stream, right? So he, he won't. So the filtering appliance now, it's not on my network rack. Uh, my network rack has a UPS, which is why I had it on there, but it's not there anymore. Now it's in my office where I have another UPS. And it's actually here. I don't want to say it out loud. So here, let's do this. This, this, don't, don't tell my son, but that's where the filtering appliance is now. So I didn't need the box to hide it. Good, good. I knew you could. <laughs> All right, so uh, going back to some of these designs, what else do we have here? Um, excuse me while I adjust my mic just a little bit. I gotta do something about the shadow on my left side. I don't have enough room in my office for like a like a boom mic, so I'm I'm gonna have to stick with headset mics. But the way I've got my lighting set up, it just does this this shadow. Anyway, um, we had a shelf in the refrigerator break, so I made a brace that I could use with epoxy and screws to put it back together. Um, I made a garage door opener um automation module if anybody's seen me do my talk on my home automation system um this is what the 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 garage door opener raspberry pi lives in i made a little box to put it in with lots of ventilation and this is mounted on the wall of my garage uh what else is interesting uh we've got guinea pig cages that have casters on them so they can roll around and one of the casters broke so i made a replacement uh was able to use the the original wheel so we the original wheel goes through that but the 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 actual caster the you know i i don't know the the whatever the bushing that holds the axle to the bottom of the cage that's that um what else is interesting oh ikea note or N-O-T, not, note, I don't know how they pronounce it. Um, anyway, 
those lamps they come with um they come with clips to hold the power cord and you always lose them so i made my own so that's what that is um I have a rain sensor outside, and this is a mount that I made. You can see it has like the GoPro camera mount um, like interface there. And this is a mount I made to hold our rainfall sensor on our gutter without having to drill any holes in the side of my house. It just uses gravity. Um, here's another good one. This is a little riser I made for um, some of my Halo toys that I have on my shelves here in my office. Um, things that like want to fly or whatever. I printed this in like blue plastic, so it looks I can like pretend they're flying or whatever. Um, and it's actually two parts, right? It has the riser itself, which I can use for most anything, but it didn't quite work well for my for for what. They call it Ghost. If you're not familiar with Halo, it's a it's like a little hovercraft thing with the Covenant ride. So um, I have one of those that I wanted to display in my office, and I built another, an extension there that 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 sits in there like that, to hold it the way it needs to be held. We all need to be held in some way or another. Um. So uh, question, do I use the same material to print all my designs? Um, generally, I, I work in PLA plastic. PLA plastic is ridiculously easy to work in. And it's, um, it's not biodegradable, uh, contrary to popular belief. But it is, however, compostable. So I feel less guilty about you know, using that all the time and throwing it out. Um, for stuff that's going to be outside, though, like uh like this rain mount thing actually i did i printed the rain mount because it's just a big block of plastic i printed it in pla actually um but i do have like right here this is a hook i made for my wife to hold um hold she has lights to hang off of off of our pergola and the pergola rail goes in like here like this is this is where the top of the pergola goes through and then she can hang her lights off of these hooks here. So we've got like uh, a nice little patio with little hanging lights. Um, this I did in PET plastic because PET plastic has a higher melting point and holds up uh, better outside. Um, this thing right here is cool though. This, you can actually see, I can actually show you this. My office is a little dark, so I'm gonna use my phone here to light it up. There we go. This is, for some reason, my flashlight just went off. Oh, it thinks I turned on the camera. I hate this phone. I mean, I didn't hate this phone, but I'm starting to hate this phone. So that is a little holster for the remote control that controls the ceiling fan um, here in my office. It doesn't have... Um, it doesn't have like a switch interface. It didn't come with, with a switch interface uh, for, for the wall or whatever. It just came with the remote. And I really wanted this, this, particular, um, this particular remote for my, uh, there's a remote module for my ceiling fan. I really wanted this one because it's Zigbee capable, which means I can integrate it with my home automation system. Um, but the, I, then I didn't have, you know, I basically just put a wire nut on the wire here in the wall so that's always on uh, and just control it with the remote. And then when I'm not using the remote, it goes right there in the holster where the switch was. <clears throat> so that is what that is. It's a little, you can see it's a, uh, how do I, mm, don't know how to turn. Oh, like that. There we go. So yeah, there's a thing on the wall. <clears throat> see if I have anything else interesting to share before we slice this. Uh, 
A um, bunch of repairs for things that the kids have done and some cosplay they did. This is morbid, but interesting, I guess, kind of. I made a little grave marker for, for some guinea pigs. Um, so that's that stuff. Oh, here's where I've really gotten my money's worth out of my 3D printer. We have an RV, right? And um, things on that thing break all the time. So I'm always coming up with with parts and like like for example here's here's a thing I invented because the the um, the AC vents in the roof are always always closing just gravity closes them so um, so I uh, uh, designed this clip it's kind of a spring loaded clip that I could stick in there and, and hold the the AC vent open. So the the remote holder, um, no, actually. So let's let's go back to the remote holder, and I'll, I'll I, I know where, you, where where the question's coming from that, and I'll I'll uh, I'll address that. So so I I think what you're saying is how did you print that when there's you know this big overhang. Um, and the, the slicing program, most slicing programs will generate supports, right? So it printed a bunch of throwaway plastic in this cavity here that I used pliers to rip out. And in fact, if I pull, if I pull the remote out and I feel, I feel in here, I can kind of feel the ridges where the, where that extension was that not the extension that support was, was printed, um, but I, I did sand them down. But yeah, I just pulled them out with pliers. <clears throat> All right, so let's slice this thing. <clears throat> and it's uploading my file now. So to slice, I use Cura. Um, hold on here. I have to convince, I, I have to tell it what printer I have. There we go. So I just installed Cura on this machine. I have never had it on this machine. All oh, right, right, yes. Click, click, click. So this is the version of Cura distributed by um, the manufacturers of my printer, um, Lulzbot. And uh, it's it's a little bit different. It's not well. It's not that different from the regular. Cura fork, but it has some some uh, settings already built in for the Lulzbot printers, and it also has like the the Lulzbot firm, firmware updater built in. Um, since I just installed this, it asked me what printer I had, and I told it I have a Lulzbot Mini, but I don't actually have that printer hooked up to this PC. Uh, oh, you know, I'm not even showing my screen. There we go, Cura. Here we go. Uh, so uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I need to set up the printer. I don't actually have a Lulzbot Mini in my office hooked up to this machine. I have it in my basement hooked up to a Raspberry Pi running a piece of software called Octoprint. Or is it Octoprint? Octopi. It's Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi, so it becomes Octopi. Anyway, that's what I'm running. Um, so we're going to actually set up the Octoprint for it. And it actually, you can see, it actually found it on my network um, using, I don't know, how does, I don't know how the discovery stuff works. Uh, I don't know if it's UPnP or Bonjour or, or what. Um, it has the, the IP address there, and it needs an API key to log on to Octoprint and print. So I'm going to open up, here, I'll bring a browser over, um, Octopi, is that what I, is that the? Yes, there it is, okay. Um, last pass. No, no, not standard user. Um, Octopi admin. Darn it. I didn't click remember me first. Oh, well. <clears throat> so this is basically a print server for my 3d printer yes yes mark red ignore mark red 
mark red. I don't care. So it's basically a print server for my 3D printer. And like I have a little camera pointed at the print bed, but it's dark down there. Um, Alexa, turn on the 3D printer. There we go. So that's my, uh, the, the uh, power module actually has the 3D printer and the lamp both hooked up to it. So I tell her to turn on the 3D printer so that the printer and the lamp both come on. And I've actually got Octoprint set up such that whenever a print job is done, it sends a little ping up through if this then that, which um, notifies my home automation system to turn off that, that module. So it turns off that the light and the printer both get shut down at that point. And, and the printer, I mean, it's, it's designed to, to withstand hard shutdowns because it's, it's, it's in idle by that point automatically. Um, anyway, so what did I come in here to do? Oh, yes, API key. Um, since this is internal to my network, I'm not going to be real paranoid about anybody copying it because, you know, I got bigger problems than you printing stuff on my 3D printer if you break into my network. There we go. Um, automatically start print no do not do that uh show webcam image sure connect the printer connected to octoprint is not operational uh yeah that's because it's not actually connected because it was turned off so connect aha waiting for print job okay um I'm not actually going to be able to print this because there's like, I got to wait for it to warm up and I got to feed the filament in and that's all a thing. I mean, maybe I could stream from my phone. Yeah. We'll get right up to the point that we send it to the print server and I'll print it later. So, um, yes. <clears throat> slicing. We were talking about slicing. Um, so Cura for Lulzbot comes with a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of profiles for different materials, like off the shelf. None of them are the brand name materials that I use um, because I'm cheap. So I actually have found a couple that just work, uh, honestly, that, that are just like close enough that they work. Um, so category experimental material PLA Matter Hackers Pro is actually what works best for me with um, did I not select that? Oh, there it is. It's what works best for me with um, what is the name brand? Esun, Esun PLA from uh, I, you get it from Amazon. I think they sell exclusively on Amazon, but they are the best best combination of price and quality. Uh, and and I have tried a number of filaments. My brother-in-law does, you know, making stuff for a living, and he's tried like every filament. And and Esun is the one he keeps coming back to. So if you're ever doing any 3D printing, go with Esun. And if you happen to be using Lulzbot Cura, which I honestly doubt it's not a real popular brand of 3D printer, but if you happen to be, um, that PLA Matter Hackers Pro uh, profile just works perfect on it. I mean, you could also set up the the, the various um, properties, you know, like how thick and temperatures and, and so forth manually, but who has time for all that? Okay, so um, you know what I didn't do? I did not, got to go back into Fusion 360. I did not export the model to import into Cura. <clears throat> I think I got to the end of my Dr. Dre playlist. Rather that or I turned down my headphones. It was option two. <clears throat> okay, Fusion. So if you dig Dr. Dre, by the way, while we're waiting for this to load, 
if you dig Dr. Dre, I have been, this has been my jam lately. Um, this guy on YouTube, this is crazy, by the way. Dr. Dre, um, what is it? Dr. Actually, he's probably in my recent plays. Oh, wait, this isn't my account. This is the my .NET Docs account. Uh, let's switch to my account. Uh, I don't see it in my recent and recommended and all that. So, well, it's um, Dr. Seuss. How do you spell Seuss? S-E-U-S-S. Dr. Yep. Dr. Seuss, Dr. Dre. There we go. We'll just search that. This guy right here, West Tank. This crazy dude. He, oh, quiet, quiet you. Um, this dude re has recorded like every Dr. Seuss book and he wraps it over Dr. Dre beats. And I, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble sharing the audio or whatever. Yeah, the .NET docs will be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the .NET docs will be getting uh, Dr. Dre Rex now. Um, but anyway, this dude, he um, does all these Dr. Seuss books um, over over Dre, and it's amazing. And it really works, and I keep listening to it. And uh, my wife used to work in a school, and she was like, oh, my God. She's like, I would be playing this for the kids all the time if if I was still in the school. Uh, so, yeah, go, go to YouTube and look up Dr. Seuss, Dr. Dre, and look up this dude, West Tank. And... I'm serious. Go down this this foxhole. You will thank me later. Um, question from Dave. Hi, Dave. Am I still using a Hubitat hub? I sure am. Let's um, this is this is mine right here at home. So, yeah. Now, I have one complaint about Hubitat, and I, I love Hubitat to pieces. I, I would never badmouth them, and uh, I, this is a um, – it's not an isolated issue. It's it, that You see several people reporting it, but they've had a hard time tracking it down, and I just kind of live with it. I have to reboot it about every five to seven days. Um, the reason being, it just starts slowing down. Like all the response times from all the devices slow down to nothing. And um, I don't know why. And it could be due to some hardware issue. I'm still trying to isolate it. Uh, I, I've asked the Hubitat people to take a look. And they, they pulled the logs from it. And they didn't see anything that jumped out at them. So... I mean, I'm just going to set it up to auto reboot. The only reason I don't have it automatically rebooting instead of making me manually do it every week is um, my my uh, system, uh, uh, my puppet system that I designed that uses .NET. It connects to the the WebSocket on the Hubitat um, device, and that WebSocket actually doesn't do anything until you log into the website. And I have security turned on logging into the website. I mean, I'm I'm I, if, contrary to what I did a minute ago where I showed the API key for my Octoprint server, I really do try to do the whole defense in depth thing and, and leave, like, even though my local network I feel is pretty secure, I still lock down all the devices on it. And, and so like if Hubitat has an option to have a password, I have the password turned on. Um, so the problem is that uh, when this thing reboots, it comes back up and I'm logged out. So the, um, the auto, um, the the I'm sorry the WebSocket doesn't start up until you actually log into the web interface, so it's a bit of a manual process for me. So I'm actually going to change um, Puppet. I'm going to make a change to Puppet. Puppet uses the the WebSocket right now, but they but Hubitat made a change to their Maker API. They have an option right here, so I can you can set up a URL in there. So it will, instead of just like emitting events on a WebSocket, I can instead have it fire off a webhook somewhere every time an event happens with one of the Hubitat devices. So what I will do is I'll change Puppet up to be a web API that listens for this webhook, and then that'll kick off the same event handling that I do today. Um, and 
I see that you pointed out that the C7 is out. I've actually been waiting for that. I may pick one up because I know they were talking about doing a... Um... So folks who aren't familiar with Hubitat, um, one of the really cool things about Hub, the first model of the Hubitat device that they put out is that it didn't have a Z-Wave and Zigbee radio integrated. It was a USB stick. And that's the model that I have. And then the next model that came out uh, it had integrated radios instead of a USB stick, which if you wanted to, if you wanted to upgrade or replace your hub, that's a problem because Z-Wave and Zigbee both, uh, both are, the, the devices are tied to the hardware, not to the software. So you can back up the, you can back up the, um, the device configuration all you want, but you can't restore it and like expect it to work because all those device pairings and hashes and everything are, are tied to the hardware. So they were working on a plan because the C, I guess it was the C5 was the first one that didn't have a radio. Um, I saw when they announced the C7, they said they're also working on a migration uh, application to be able to move like the device associations from an older Hubitat hub to the new C7. Uh, so I'm excited about the C7. I hope that they have that hardware migrate. In fact, why don't we look, see if they've, if only we had access to this vast network of all of the world's known information. So there is the C7 and you were right. It is available. Oh, it is so, so tempting. You know, I'm actually trying to save money right now. It's one of those things where I'm going to, I I would buy it and love it and then feel guilty about it. Um, see if they have any announcements. Uh, news and updates. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is interesting. Before you undertake what can be a very time-consuming process of moving smart devices to a new hub, you should be aware of a new subscription service we plan to introduce within the next month, Hub Protection Service. Yada, 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 yada. Back up the Z-Wave and Zigbee radio settings for C5 only. Well, what about my C4 with the USB stick? Does that, do I just take the stick and plug it into the C7, I guess? Does it still have a USB port? Is that like the intention? I don't know. See this post about for more information about Hub Protection Service. Complete control over backup scheduling. Do, do, hub, hub, mig hub migration with all apps and devices. So with optional radio restoration to any hub registered. So they must be talking about just backups here. But down here, they're saying that you can actually just migrate the whole thing, which I'm down for that and a warranty service. I don't know what y'all price it, but um, if anybody from Hubitat is watching, I'm going to say right now, um, like $5 a month or $50 a year would be a good price point for me. I would probably shell out for that. Uh, I feel like $5 a month is a reasonable ask for, for a cloud service uh, related to home automation. So that's my opinion. Uh, of course, of course, I hope it comes in cheaper, but you know, I think five is a good number. Um, mad villain. Okay. I will certainly, let me look that up right now. Mad villain. So is that the out? Al that's an album. What am, what am I, what am I looking for? I mean, cause there's an artist. All right, well, see all albums. Uh, villains. I guess Spotify doesn't, or yeah, it doesn't look like Spotify has what you're talking about. I'll have to, I'll have to see if I can find it somewhere else. Oh, really? First one on on this list, this this album right here. Okay. Um, oh, what the hell? Let's play it now. Uh, 
Okay. So where was I? Oh, I was going to slice that design that I never exported. Um, yeah, that's that was the confusion. This uh, I knew I got it wrong. It was mad villainy. All right. So where did I save that thing? I called it what I call it, vine hook. Yeah, there it is. So let's export that as an STL. Um, and I'll just put it on the desktop. All right. So here's Cura. So here's where we're going to do our slicing. Um, excuse me. I don't remember where the add model button is. Oh, open file. There it is. So I'm going to guess that it's not going to print like that. That's, uh, that's not going to work. Um, rotate around the X axis, 90 degrees. There we go. So I was going to print it like that, and I still might. Um, that'll probably print the fastest. Um, and if we switch to the layer view, Oh, not material color. I wanted a uh, line type. There we go. So if we switch to the layer view and we can see the layers that are actually going to get printed and we'll zoom, we'll zoom in quite a bit for this. We can actually like layer by layer, see the, see the path of the print head as it prints. If you, if you're new to 3d printing, this might be um, surprising. Most 3d prints are not solid. They, they have this infill pattern inside. Um, now the common belief is that it, whoops, I did not mean to drag that. The common belief is that that infill um, pattern provides uh, like rigidity. And I personally think it probably does my brother-in-law the the guy who makes all this stuff he says that it's really just there to support the top layer so as we print up as we go layer up layer up layer up and we get up to the top that top layer has to, wants to sit on something right there i mean there's several top layers but the first one needs to needs to sit on something due to gravity um the other thing here do we have uh, supports turned on? Yeah, so we'll generate supports to hold up the overhangs. So you can see that it's wanting to generate some supports to hold up that rounded beveled edge, both of the rounded beveled edges, and some supports to hold up the screw hole. So, I mean, we could pull those out with pliers pretty easily or a pick, a dental pick or something like that. So I might just go ahead and let it print on its side like that. The other option that I was considering about how to print it was rotate along the Z axis. Um, 90 degrees. Oh, wait, no, that was wrong. It is the it is the X axis. How, how did that happen? Oh, no. Uh, 180 degrees. That's what I wanted. I could print it like that, and we would need fewer supports. We would still end up, it's still going to print supports um, for the screw holes. But 
But again, that won't be too hard to clean up. I can just pull that out with pliers and, and file it down for the screw hole if I need to. So yeah, I could print out I could print out a number of those. In fact, I could print I could print like how many of these could I print? Let's um there is a button somewhere here to duplicate. Multiply selected model, number of copies. We'll make eight of them. See if I can fit eight of them on the print bed. Okay, let's turn off that layer view. Whoops. Oops, nope, control Y, there we go. One, make sure I select all these. Two, three, four, five, six. We'll pull them out toward us a little bit. There we go, making more room on the print bed. The dark gray area here, um, this dark gray area through here, is what it's illustrating is like the that's the no print zone right so everything that's light gray is where i can print on the print bed um so how many more of these can, can i print on this thing i think i can probably rotate these guys along this axis well, that's not what I wanted to do, but why is this so slow? I've got a beefy machine, and it's still just dragging. I could probably fit a bunch more on here, actually. But this is, how many is this? This is nine. That's going to be more than enough to hang up the plant and have a few more because that plant is growing like crazy. Just a reminder for what we're doing is we're making hooks to hang this plant more effectively because my existing hooks are stick-on and they keep falling off the wall and occasionally taking the paint with them. So that that is that's that's all sliced. So if we review the the layer view again, and look at it layer by layer, we can see that it's not going to print any supports anywhere. Here, let's turn off the travels. So I'm going to print any supports anywhere until it gets up to the top. And it's going to just print a very small support for the overhangs on the screw hole, which honestly the screw hole should probably print okay without supports anyway. You can do small overhangs generally. Um, so what else am I going to do before I send this to the printer? Uh, let's make sure of our material. Those temperatures look good. I, I Like I said, I worked with the EVGA uh or EVGA, ESUN PLA, um, and 215 degrees Celsius is a good temperature for that. Um, the quality setting that it's defaulted to is a 0.25 millimeter layer height, quarter of a millimeter. Um, it can do much finer than that. We can get all the way down to a tenth of a millimeter, but why? You know, this is not, this is to hang plants on a wall. It's not to be, you know, super, um, super appealing visually. <sighs> About the only other thing I like to change usually is as we zoom in, you see this little line right here that it likes to print around the printing area. And the reason it does that is to prime 
the uh the print head because you know they get some air in there and it's to get like all the air forced out of the print head as it forces the molten plastic down and so they just draw a line all the way around the object that you're printing just to you know again just get the plastic flowing now the problem is that one line is almost never enough for some reason i always end up with a little bit more air um that it needs to force out of the line force out of the force out of the chamber so um i actually go down to the build plate adhesion type i leave it on skirt but i just set it for uh two lines uh the other thing that i do instead of setting it for two lines sometimes i'll i'll change the minimum length to like 400 millimeters and that'll force it to be two lines but just telling it two lines is, is usually enough so now it's going to print a two line skirt really get it primed and then it'll um then it'll start printing the hooks so that that's pretty much all i'm doing at this point you can see um it's estimating that it will take about um five hours to print so i'll just let it go overnight and it, it the it'll like i said it octoprint will here i'll send it to octoprint right now octoprint will um send a ping to hubitat through ift to tell it to turn off the 3d printer when it's done so i don't have to worry about leaving it on all night or whatever um is it almost as fun as watching paint dry it is uh, about as fun as watching paint dry. The difference, however, is that I get an automatic time lapse with um, Octoprint. Um, where are they? Here they are. So, like, I've got, I don't know what, it, what, what this is, attempt to. So, I don't know what attempt to. It is probably something my son printed. I hope I don't regret this. Um, here, let's download it and see what the time, time lapse is. It is nothing. It is dark. Oh, need to be able to play MPEG-2. Yes, download the MPEG-2 extension. Come on, Windows, hurry up. How long does it take to install a codec? Why am I using this one? Ugh. Go away. Oh, wait. Oh, the camera wasn't even aimed right. Oh, there you changed the camera. Oh, oh, so that I remember when he did that. That's a little I don't know what that that uh, medallion is exactly. I don't know what the um, what the symbol there is. Let's see if I can full screen this and make the go away. Let's see if I can We'll zoom it. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what that little medallion is that he printed, but he did a really kind of cool thing there where he did. Um, it's it's kind of difficult to pull off. He stopped the print job at a certain layer and switched out the filament. He started. He did a green layer and then he stopped it and did it stopped the print job. Just paused it, switched out to black filament, unpaused the print job, and then uh, did another. Uh, at the end, did, did the last few layers in, in that green. Um, I'm really kind of impressed. This is the son, by the way, who ever, whenever this is the teenager I talk about, who's an angry teenager, who's in one of those I hate dad phases. I don't know why he hates me. I am incredibly proud of him, and I'm not strict with him. And I, I think it's just being a teenager, and hopefully he'll outgrow it. Um, I wonder if I have any other interesting time lapses on here. <sighs> See, do I even want to know what those are? Ever since my boy, here I'll just zoom in. I'll just withhold comment. I have sons, so I'm just um. Ooh, this ought to be interesting. This right here. Um, how long will it take to download from my Pi? Oh, not too long. But this time I'm not going to be a doofus. This time I'm not going to open it in um, in the Windows Photo thing. This time I am going to show in folder and open with VLC Media Player. 
So this is an Amazon Echo Dot holder. And I don't remember printing this one. Oh yeah, no, this I do remember printing this one. This is this is in my uh, in my basement. So I mean, this took hours, right? And this does this is pretty boring, um, but at least it generates a time lapse. And then ta-da, there it's done. So that's what watching the vine hooks print will be like and maybe i can show off the time lapse another time but now i'm going to go downstairs let's actually tell it to warm up where is temperature there it goes um warm up to 205 and that's the print head and then the print bed i'll warm up to 40 celsius and those are going to get warm, and I'm going to go downstairs and change out the filament and start the print job. That's really all I wanted to do today was just this little job. I've been putting it off. Um, thought I'd get on Twitch and ham it up a little bit because I like hamming it up, and it's a pandemic, and I don't get to ham it up anymore. Um, actually, as I look at this, I'm going to make one change. Uh, no, I'm not. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just do it off stream. Because I'm going to go play some Xbox and go to bed and maybe eat dinner. So it looks like I have a handful of viewers. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me these last couple hours. I don't stream by myself very often. And I'm going to start because it's a lot of fun. I like hanging out with Scott and Dave on the .NET Doc Show. And I don't think we've made an official announcement yet. Uh, but the .NET Doc Show is actually going to be changing schedule and is going to be becoming an official .NET community stand-up. Um, James Montemagno and Scott Hanselman asked us uh, to consider doing that, and we accepted. So uh, good things are happening to us. We're going to have a, huge, uh, a much bigger viewership, and maybe even I can generate some more viewership for my own stream if I keep doing interesting stuff like the 3D printing. And uh, at some point, I got some changes I want to do to the puppet system. Dave, that, that idea I was talking about, I'm going to stream doing those changes at some point in the hopefully not too distant future. So uh, with that, I'd like to say good night to everybody. Uh, please tune in Thursday to the .NET Doc Show. And... Uh, Take care and stay safe in this pandemic.